One Piece chapter 965. So this was like an amazing chapter. It's just so cool to get to see these legends do stuff in these flashbacks. Like just seeing what like the Whitebeard's crew was like and them like running away from the Navy and just interacting in general. And then just finally seeing Roger at the end. It was amazing. Just that one panel. Of them. That's all we really needed. That's, that's how Oda does things. He just drops one massive panel and that's all we really need. And we're just set for the whole entire chapter itself but uh let's get into it because there's a few things that we need to talk about so we're seeing that momonosuke was born on whitebeard's ship and i think that's pretty interesting and it's also revealed that odin had a bounty that's something that i never really took into consideration but like it was always like something that was going to be a thing because you know he is a yango commander after all which is established in this chapter that he is indeed the mythical second division commander that was eventually filled by ace we all kind of connected the dots and knew that that was going to happen but it's just nice to get some clarifications here uh but as for like what his bounty would be well i mean it's really difficult to say if the world government exactly knows how dangerous odin is to make like an accurate estimate on him but if we're just like equating like his quote-unquote power level to the bounty i know that triggers some people but i mean he's definitely north of a billion i mean just given how he clashed with friggin whitebeard we all kind of realized then and there how truly powerful he was uh, and also that he's like a legitimate yahoo commander at this point I mean, he's got to be north of a billion. So another big reveal we're getting in this chapter is the moment that Blackbeard joined Whitebeard's crew. And another thing that's just thrown on top of that is the confirmation that he is an orphan. And I'm pretty sure this is the first time we're finding this out. We kind of like, you know, guessed based on that, that flashback childhood picture that Oda drew of him, like looking up at the moon. We kind of just assumed that he was an orphan. And also given that Whitebeard always takes in orphans and whatnot, it made sense. But I think... This is more pushing towards the theory that he is, in fact, Rox's son. You know, because he's 40 and that's like lining up with the timeline of Rox getting taken out. He is a D, just like Rox, and then his the name of his ship is the Saber of Zebek. So I guess at this point, it's all but just needs confirmation that he is, in fact, Rox's son. And he's also. I think it pretty much by this time has already read like the devil fruit stuff and researched all the stuff so he's already in pursuit of trying to get the yummy yummy no me because that's what he said he said he only joined whitebeard's crew for a better uh, method of gaining that so i guess like even at this young age he was already in pursuit of uh, becoming the pirate king or just becoming all powerful essentially so now let's go into this whole quote-unquote granny witch orochi revelation portion of this chapter so this is extremely interesting and if we read between the lines we might be able to figure out way more than what is on the surface here so first of all it is obviously in the translator's notes that she has the same fruit that we saw from bond clay aka mr two so that's super interesting and i guess that means that she eventually dies considering that he gets the fruit and it's definitely not her being, you know, Bon Clay in the future. So, uh, how does she get taken out? I assume that it's Orochi that does it, you know, just clearing up, uh, you know, loose ends and him not really needing her anymore once he becomes Shogun, or maybe even even before that. But I, I think it's there's like a 97% chance that Orochi takes her out. So, she her real identity is not revealed, but it's either like she's a part of the kurozumi clan maybe she's like his grandmother or something or she's like a part of uh, the world government or something like a uh, cp maybe she's tied to them possibly cp zero something like that possibly or just some outside influence that is purposely targeting orochi because like the specific instructions that she gives them is that like begin hoarding as much gold as you can and start manufacturing weapons the quality of uh, Wano's craftsmanship is exceptional. If you make good use of that advantage, you will be able to get some big players to back your cause. So I think that's super interesting because that's like our main incentive here. Um, and we see that later on, the big players that are backing the cause the present day are CP0. Like they give them a warship in exchange for the weapons. The, the world government obviously wants these weapons. So maybe this could be like a mother caramel type thing with her. But also the whole thing where she like becomes sukiyaki and then tricks everyone it's 
literally the same plot line that we saw back in Alabasta with Cobra and Mr. Two and, and Crocodile. And rather than this just being a recycled storyline, I would like to think that Oda is probably using this as like the predecessor to Crocodile's original plan. Like maybe Crocodile heard of this like he was like oh that's pretty interesting how that all happened i'm gonna do that and then he searched out for the person who had this fruit in bond clay and then used him for his plan i, I think that's plausible right but also another super interesting thing is the people that she shows that she has become already and it, she's also already said that she has been outside of Wano and has had a whole bunch of trouble and whatnot but the first person that she becomes is like this beautiful younger lady now this person looks very similar to the young version that we saw of shinobu so maybe it's her maybe it's not but i think this might be her which might be indicating that shinobu is in fact the traitor meaning that this goes all the way back like to this time like this whole big coup with Orochi it's so prevalent to this day so we know that Shinobu was originally part of like the Fugurokuju stuff and that Fugurokuju was also uh, a traitor to the Kozuki's once uh, Orochi came to power so maybe this goes all the way back to him maybe Fugurokuju or whoever trained him or whatever is like the Strusen or the treble of this arc like it was all orchestrated so that Orochi can be the the face of power so that they can all get to the point of where they want to be now another thing is that she becomes young Shiki. Now we know this is young Shiki because it has the same exact eyebrows and this is more or less his face. I don't think we ever really see what young Shiki looks like. This might be the first time, but that's definitely him. So it's possible that she might have been with Rock's crew or something like that. And then after he did, it disbanded, she came back to Wano possibly. But another thing is that we're seeing how he gets the Yamato no Mi, the mythical serpent fruit that he has. I didn't think this was going to happen this way. I thought a, a Kaido was going to give it to him or something. I don't know, because he always has, like, fruits like that. He always rolls with Zoans. But this is cool, and another reason why I think she might have been with Rocks or somebody like that, because they're the type of crews that are only getting these outrageously powerful fruits. Another thing that we're seeing is uh, Marco. He By the time we get to um, the end of the chapter, we see that he already has the Phoenix fruit at that point. So somewhere in between this time, I guess he's got it. I mean, this is the first time we're seeing it, so maybe he didn't have it originally, like when the flashback started. But maybe she was with Brox, maybe not. So then Whitebeard's ship approaches this island, and we see, like, all these fish just running away from it and all these animals. And it turns out because Roger's there with his crew, and we can assume that he's definitely the cause of them running away, and it, we're just seeing, like, Roger and his crew, like, this is, like, the first time we've seen them like this. Definitely the most intimidating Roger has ever looked. I mean, it's we're finally starting to see, like, it's a glimpse of his strength. I mean, him just holding somebody like that with a shirt open and his, you know, his body on flare. I mean, it's pretty awesome. So, we're also seeing, like, more of his crew. There's, like, a fisherman there. Uh, we're seeing, like, another dude in the back that we haven't seen before. So, he notices that Whitebeard has landed on the island as well and then he's pretty much saying that he's gonna go fight him because screw it this may be their final encountering each other and according to the timelines this is more or less two years before Rogers is executed so another thing that's going to be happening here is we might see the first time that Shanks and Blackbeard meet, meet each other and I don't think that Shanks is gonna get his scar here you know that yeah blackbeard gave him because if we go back to chapter 958 uh when we see the flashback of odin on roger's ship like after he's already joined his crew uh shanks doesn't have the scar then so i guess he gets it later on possibly unless Oda just forgot to draw it but i doubt it he, he rarely makes continuity errors like that but so what's going to happen in the next chapter well i just hope that we just at least get a clash between roger and and Whitebeard. That's all I want. Just like a Big Mom and Kaido clash. That's more than enough. Because it would really be mean if Oda just skips over this entirely. Considering that he's setting it up here. Uh, but, you know, anything could happen. But what is definitely going to happen is that Odin is going to join uh, Roger's crew at this point. Because, like, if we go back to 958, it's, it's going to line up with that. So why does he join Roger's crew? Well, I assume that because they're going to clash or something, and then he's going to see how ridiculously powerful Roger is, and he's going to be like, hey, 
let me just join you. And also, we saw, you know, earlier in the chapter, he didn't want to be the second division commander. It's like too much responsibility. He doesn't want that. He just wants to be adventurers and do whatever he wants, essentially. So that's another reason why he's going to be joining Roger, so that because he could just do whatever he wants with Roger. into uh, Roger's display of power or there could be like a Davy back fight something like that and then that could be something that Oda does to subvert the fight but man I just hope we get a clash with these guys but that's pretty much it for the video today guys let me know what you thought about this chapter it was incredible where do you see things headed let me know and if you like the review please give it a like and uh, I also have a patreon it gives you access to a weekly Q&A and if you haven't already please subscribe as well have a great day and I'll see you in the next